Hello, you're listening to the Robot Wars History Podcast, a podcast where we chat the development of this show and the British robot combat scene in general by looking at key teams and bots. I'm your host Luke, and with me today is Nick. Hello. Dan. Hi. And our special guest for this episode, Rosetti's Replicas. Well, welcome aboard. It's a, a big episode, so, you know, having, you know, uh, an extra hand on deck is uh, probably a good idea. An extra hand. Yes, it is indeed a big episode. An extra hand full of we are finally reaching. Bags. Sorry. <laughs> we are finally reaching the big one. Probably biggest we're going to, well, biggest we're going to have until, like, we get to be a month, I guess. Um, yeah, today we are covering the first part of the career of Razor. Oh my god, I've been waiting so fucking long for this episode. He he really has. Like, Dan, genuinely, since we first started this series in, like, mid-2017, was it? 2018? I forget now. Every Jesus single Christ. day, this man has basically been like, are we doing Razor today? Are we doing Razor tomorrow? <laughs> are we doing Razor next week? And <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and he finally gets can... his long wish. Granted. You can tell that from the amount of times I've managed to divert the conversation to be about Razor in previous episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so we may as well get right into it. Razor made its debut in Series 2, and, well, from the start, this thing really stood out. And the key part about that is the thing, probably the most, easily the most important thing about Razor, its design. Now, Razor... I think is the perfect design, the the best design we ever saw in Robot Combat. It was the it can, in every possible aspect: aesthetics, utility, um, hell, damageability. All right, JP. It, <laughs> it pretty much excelled. Yeah, I think the thing with yeah. Razor is that it had its um, it had its look nearly from the start. Like, it didn't have the wings, but it still looked great even without them. Whereas, like, yeah. other aesthetic machines, like, Chaos 2 was Chaos beforehand. And that looked like a Series 4 round 1 dropout, to be <laughs> slightly harsh. Uh, Firestorm, yeah, Firestorm had those kind of ugly belts on it. Bit of an awkward looking wedge and paint. And other machines like that, they kind of had to go through... One or two little tweaks before they looked quite nice. Whereas Razor just looked even better when it added its wings and stuff like that. So. Yeah. yeah. The, the, inter the interesting thing is that when, when Razor debuted, uh, the weapon wasn't supposed to be a beak. It was supposed to be a scorpion tail. And because everybody thought it was a beak at Series 2, they added the eyes to the uh, to the end of it. For, for series three and they had the wings on the stream egg and it became this sort of bird reptile creature <laughs> all right so, jp part of the, yeah. <laughs> well you know it, I mean, it's a bit a bit of a bit bit tautological because of course birds did evolve from reptiles but you know yes i mean the beak is the perfect example because like by series two standards it was easily the most damaging weapon there yeah um <laughs> Not it, a lot of competition it looked in, there, but you know. It looked incredible, like those like those eye things. They gave it so much character. Whereas you look at something like Tiberius or something, it does just look like, I don't know, it, it looks like a piece of machinery. Mm. And even the wings, the wings give it that bird reptile look, but they also give it a self-writer. Yeah. It's... Yeah, the, oh, they look God. cool and they're also practical. It isn't like, I don't know, the Predator's... Uh, knitting needles, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I could, I could wax, I could wax rhapsodic on the look of Razor for literal hours. I think. Yeah, it, it, it's one of the the few robots that's just outright a work of art and also isn't shit. <laughs> Pretty much. Thank you that's for putting well, that yeah, so eloquently, that, isn't... Dan. <laughs> yeah. See, I would have called it like, I mean, this is kind of quoting from Greg from BattleBots describing what he's looking for in 2020. Um, he says a good silhouette, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. a distinguisher between even the later Chaos Twos and Firestorms. Like silhouette of them is still just just a wedge at the end of the day, but yeah. Razor, on the other hand, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially debuting when it did, because um, going on to even 
Razor without the wings, it it looks a bit awkward. It it's like Razor going through puberty. <laughs> but it, it's a Razor just... pullback that's had its self writing wings broken off because the plastic quality on those was shocking. Well, <laughs> I mean, I unashamedly had a second Razor and just flat out ripped the wings off to do that. But we won't talk about. Oh that. goodness, that's because you're a heathen. <laughs> yeah, but it made it more balanced. Like now, my makeshift Mega Morg toy that I'd make out of like a roll of toilet roll would actually have a chance of flipping razor and beating it. So oh. <laughs> don't argue too much, Dan, please. I beg. Uh, I think I might, but we'll save that for after the, after the recording. I mean, yeah, you just, you just got to look at who are the most successful bots in this series. You've got a yellow box, a literal road sign, and a wheelie bin lid painted pink. <laughs> and Cassius, but you know. Yeah. Cassius is the exception, yeah. but... Yeah, Cassius being great by Series 2 standards, but um, being... Well, Cassius done... would... Be... <laughs> I, I, I would... I would think that, that Series 2 Cassius would have still been pretty great all the way up to Series 4. But, you know... I mean, they had some issues, like, being unable to really flip a robot fully, and... Um, True, yeah. And its ground clearance was still um, optimized for the gauntlet. Mm. And the yeah, belt. I mean, the, uh... <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the gauntlet, though, oh, Razor yes. immediately Razor immediately makes its impression because it goes into the Ram Rigs, just scoops up Shun, shoves them all the way to the end, and looks like it's already like crushing into something important. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> the yeah. first time, <laughs> the of first time of many a time where Jonathan Pierce lost his shit with Razor. Hey, what a beautiful start <laughs> to a timeline. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The, the, the it's probably one of the. It, it's one of, if not the best gauntlet runs in Series 2. Oh, well, my friend Wheelosaurus did murder Sergeant <laughs> Bash, but it is up there, yes. Yeah, mad respect to them for taking the ram rig. Um, yeah, that, that, that was the, 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 the route that looked like it would be easy, but was always just like, oh no, everything fucking dies in the ram. Yeah, a few of the robots everything. had like the actual control, because like, if you pivoted just a tad bit too far, you were screwed. Yeah, and I and just on another point to that, um, like everybody was taking the what you call it the Sentinel route and just diving into one of the pits. Cause yeah, the, because it was yeah statistically was... at least one robot wasn't going to make it that far. Yeah, I don't know. But, if you, yeah, the, I don't this, know if you guys was... have you guys seen that Robot Wars revealed where mm -hmm. with um the heat with King Buxton and All Torque and yes. Yeah, where the guy's coming around and telling them that, yeah, okay, we've, we're officially pissed off at people for doing the pit strategy. So now we're basically <laughs> going to sick the house robots on you if you try that. <laughs> Just That's imagine a... if they literally, like, stuck the Sentinel in the way of that route so they <laughs> literally couldn't go down there. <laughs> That sounds like the sort of thing they would do. Yeah, and then Razor would just eat the guy's <laughs> leg in the machine and get through that route anyway, so not the best yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. This is speaking of the Ram Rig, this is the same episode where number three seed body hammer gets uh, uh taken out by the Ram Rig insultingly early. So <laughs> do, do we count that as a do we count that as a victory on between Razor and Team Cold Fusion. No, we don't. <laughs> Poor thing. It's the closest they ever get to one, but no. So yeah, Razor, Razor goes through the gauntlet and goes into the football. And Okay, I've got a controversial thing to note Go on. Razor affixes something to the beak to give it a greater means of controlling the ball. It gives it something to make its method of attack wider. Oh. That sounds like cheating to me. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody did that, though. Yeah. All I'm saying is that when a cert when we discuss a certain fight, uh, I won't be having much sympathy. <laughs> what Razor, yeah, Razor Razor versus the proposed kilohertz fight where John Reed was going to bring out the anti-crushing <laughs> TV or whatever it was going to be. Yes, oh. yes, that one. I thought it was going to be uh, tall panels of polycarbonate. Anti-crushing skyscraper. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Do we have pictures? Of that? A wait. A C anti crush anti crushing skyscraper as well. <laughs> Today it's yes. Oh god, yeah. The uh the the trial round was always a bit shit, wasn't it? Let's be fair. <laughs> a little bit. 
I mean, <laughs> wait, it was this heat where like uh, three of the bots didn't even score, didn't they? <laughs> Millian, Bug, King, King B, Elvis, and uh, Sting, and three of them didn't even score, as far as I remember. <laughs> Says a lot. Probably. Yeah. And then they just said to Sting, well, you're probably going to break down the first anyway, so we'll kick you out for now. So. <laughs> yeah, Vitz, so there's a, there's a unsurprisingly gets through the football, but it, there are... No, the soccer. The in TV st- <laughs> no, it's football. <laughs> Unbelievable. We're not Americans. Most of us. Exactly. <laughs> no, 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 no! By, by being by being on the Robot Wars History podcast, you automatically lose American citizenship and gain British citizenship. Oh, uh, it's the same but slightly less shit. Yeah, my <laughs> yeah, my countrymen aren't gonna like that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Vesa gets past the football and faces Inquisitor, and I mean. This fight's a bit. This fight's obviously a bit infamous, but credit to Razor because they immediately show why they're one of the scariest spots in the arena. Because they just, they just warp like Inquisitor's entire back panel. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else have you got from the? The only one other bot that comes close in damage in this series is like Killertron, just like bashing through. That people. says a lot. That's oh, yeah. the next level That's up the... on da- down on damage is Killertron. That, yeah. that'd be like saying yeah. carbide in series 9 the next level down is trolley rage you, you don't want to jump <laughs> that far straight away ideally <laughs> yeah it's uh... yeah because I mean they originally built Razor because they figured that because they knew noticed that everything else like axes they're not going to stand up well they won't do anything to good armour Sp- spinners and not that everything though, had good armour in, in series 2 but you know Thinking ahead, they they operated on the they kind of took inspiration from like hydraulic crushers and stuff. And I mean, it's yeah. for series two standards, seeing that metal just warp mm. is pretty visceral. And and yeah, and and that it would keep doing that for pretty much the rest of its career. So yeah, I mean, when you think yeah. that the most metal warping we saw in series one was a uh, warthog going into the sidebars, then <laughs> this is very <laughs> impressive in comparison. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh... You know, there, there there is a phenomenal amount of power in that in that uh, crusher arm, and uh, then it breaks down. <laughs> Poor oh thing. god! Yeah, appara- apparently Ian tried to get better purchase on Quizzer, and somehow that caused the bot to jump into the air. And when it landed, the impact sh- of the wheels was turning sheared the drives. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how the hell they got up in the air. That that but... that's probably a good reason why they added the tail for the Shremek in um in series three. Yes. Yeah. yeah they, I mean, that is why they added it. Yeah. Explicitly. That. Yeah. To, to to make sure the base plate didn't didn't have rough impacts with the floor. Um. But it is a, a really disappointing exit because it's, you know, it it was easily a champion grade robot even this yeah. early, and then it just shat the bed. It did. <laughs> But yeah. at um, the same time, you've got to give it a, a ton of credit for working as well as it did in its very first attempt as trying to be something that powerful. Like, yeah, and it that could have advanced. easily been, I don't know, what's a really crap crusher? Uh, crusher. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> we'll go with yeah. that. It could have been Crusher before Crusher was Crusher, but instead yeah. it was kind Execution. of Razor. Yeah, but... Um... Yeah, this is, and yeah, like we said earlier, the the robot was finished literally the day before filming. Exactly. Yeah, it, it was completely untested. So, yeah, and understandably, it, it won the best design award at the end of the series. Uh, Easily. Yeah. The the only the only other contender technologically is probably Cassius, and aesthetically, <laughs> no contender. Yeah, there. nothing else was 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 even. In the same ballpark. In like, terms of... Cassius looks clean and nice, but damn. Cassius looks nice, but it's not Razor. No, yeah, oh, it's no. still a wedge and still black. <laughs> yeah, I mean Razor's not exactly pink, is it? It's uh, silver, so yeah. yeah but That's it looks to its credit. <laughs> but, um... Imagine a pink okay. Razor. Sorry, I'll stop talking. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, they 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 uh, then went and and. Conquered America. <laughs> uh, by that I mean they they took part in in uh, Long Beach, nineteen ninety nine, 
uh, where they, they, I think they did win a giant nut for one of the rumbles. Yeah, they? they did. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. a really so this... awkward rumble because most machines kind of killed themselves, but Razor also, Ra- Racer, Razor also did a good job in the meantime. So it, yeah. yeah, it was a deserved win. So yeah, yeah, Razor has been kind of on BattleBots, so that's cool. Um, but but, I had a certain fight with a with a bot that we yeah. shouldn't discuss. Uh, yeah, one of the most infamous ones in terms of, of people arguing BattleBots versus Robot Wars. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which in my mind isn't really even an argument worth having. They're both fucking great. So the. Yeah, they, they came back and they added the wings, and but they also added something very important that kind of goes unnoticed with Razor. They added, on the recommendation of George Francis, a gyro to help Razor better control and more stable. And I mean, this is like Razor, this is the secret like weapon of Razor. Like, yeah. Razor, beco- Razor with the gyro and with Ian Lewis's driving almost never misses its target. It is so good at getting where getting its claw where it wants. And combined with the wedge, which will later on become basically unbeatable nearly. Yeah, it makes that's what makes Razor so like so dominant. Yeah. It it's uh it it's all it's all in the, the driving and and it's funny because until sort of more recently, you didn't really hear a whole lot of praise for, for Ian and Simon when people started debating best drivers. Because you'd always get, like, uh, Kim Davies would always be the first one people brought up, and then uh, David Gribble. Um, and then, you know, you'd have people bring up George Francis and Ian Watts, but Razor kind of went unnoticed in that respect for a while until people went back and watched the episodes in in more recent times and realised, hang on a minute, this thing is incredibly well driven. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where if a machine is amazingly good, it's automatically deemed to just be good with or without good driving. But you think Razor was always well driven, even when its design wasn't fully optimised, it was still precise, sharp, always did what you would want it to do in the moment so yeah and uh and then mentor decided to stick it in a heat with uh at least two robots that had tall sloping armor <laughs> <laughs> the the backstabber there's not much to the backstabber fight no um, no there isn't yeah it just dies so we can, we, <laughs> yeah yeah it dies it gets pitted with it does a nice pull wet in the center backstabber Crowd backstabber goes, does have one of those things. most i'm gonna die in 10 seconds looks ever doesn't it <laughs> so it kind of lived up to praise like <laughs> there's some machines that you just can't imagine moving full stop and that is definitely one of them yeah <laughs> razor Absolutely. and agent orange are the only robots in this heat that aren't shit and neither of them win <laughs> oh mate i love agent orange sorry we, we already covered crap robots i like in a uh, series four uh shit i am Steam, not having that yeah, sorry continue, not having this continue. slander against blade not having this oh mate blade yeah. is a piece of shit mate, <laughs> <laughs> mate is... spike over blade there's my hot take i'm gonna stop talking oh yeah but uh yeah, they, they took a, a swing at, at Matilda, because um, Razor are one of those machines that's a perennial house robot attacker. Yeah, uh, you could probably do like a Razor tries to attack at the very least Matilda compilation, and JP's commentary would be exactly the same in every single clip. It's like, they're going to body pop Matilda! Every single time. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... So then, then Razor goes on to... Another infamous fight in their history. They have quite a few. It's versus this one against Dia Tour in the International League. Yay! Uh, yeah, let's just get to that. that. Now, the credit for Razor in this Agrobot fight, it take it goes on a while because it, when you watch the Inquisitor fight, Razor's dead in like half a minute. Here, it at least going off the TV edit, which means there's probably more that we didn't see. It's like two thirds of the way in that they finally yeah. die and. Yeah. They do some pretty gnarly damage to Agrobot. Well, yeah, I was about to but... say, when you consider, like, random awkward design counters, like Firestorm 2 being completely ineffective against Bolt from the Blue, in terms of actually trying to complete an attack, Razor did have those struggles here, but it still did get in, as you say, really damaging attacks at some stages, including that yeah. gorgeous back 
uh, side cripple job, which uh, JP and myself probably liked a bit too much. <laughs> probably. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, that's that's credit to Agrobot, honestly. When yeah. you consider how dire they got in their later career, the fact they survived those two attacks, even if they were mostly just to the armor, and not the insides, is still impressive. Yeah. Um, and then, just as it as it's really starting to to murder the fuck out of Agrobot. Uh, the Crusher malfunctions, opens all the way up into full self-writing position, and gets stuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah just... and then we had that really, really awkward flashback to Series 2, and then the immediate cut to Craig Charles saying, Oh, that's the end of the fight, lads. Like, Yeah, that was bizarre. That's like the only yeah. the only time they have a flashback in the middle of a yeah, fight. Yeah, and like it, it, I wouldn't say it stood out in a bad way or anything. It, it was kind of nice, it, it's, awkward. It, it's... But nice. It's, fit, it, it's kind of fitting because, like, they are being done in here by the feature they added. Yeah, in, exactly. Of how they lost in series. But in just, series. just imagine <laughs> if, like, afterwards in Robot Wars, every single time a robot lost, there'd be an immediate flashback to to the exact same way they lost <laughs> in the past. Like, that'd be hilarious. Like, <laughs> it would. Actually, nuts yeah. two takes out Carbide's Immedi weapon chain, and immediately it like flashes back to Carbide's weapon dying against Apollo, and it'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> immediately after Bigger Brother pulls off the pitting, it cuts to Hypnotis getting pitted by uh, <laughs> Pussy Candy. <laughs> Friggin' Every, every time <laughs> Terra Turtle breaks down, it's an immediate flashback <laughs> to another Terra Turtle breakdown. It's too... Yeah, by and series, in, by and series, in the yeah, World series. Well, yeah, flashbacks. in the World Series, you'd have the big nipper breakdown, and then you just show the concussion breakdown 20 minutes beforehand, so that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so after... After two two attempts at the competition, they they haven't got further than heat semi final, and in a way, they actually got further in series two because heat semi final was the third round in the series two format, where it's only the second round in the series three format. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in terms of the main competition, Beza from here it, it wins the pinball, it wins best design again, understandably. <laughs> It gets nominated for Best Engineer and loses to Chaos 2, which... Again, yeah, understandably. Good. They, they, Razor certainly... It was well-engineered, but I wouldn't give it an award for it when it was... When it broke down. <laughs> yeah. That kind of, uh, yeah, precludes... Like, yeah, only yeah. worthy bots like Derek can get that. Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I would maybe have given Best Design to Hypnodisc, but, you know. Yeah. It, yeah. It's between those two. Pretty much. You can't really be mad either way, but it would have been nice to give it to Hypnodisc, I guess. You know, the whole, yeah. the whole <laughs> kid, the whole kid uh, making the toy uh, <laughs> narrative would have been, like, typical Robot Wars thing to link into it as well, so... Like, it's justification, so... Yeah. And yeah, I, as I, Luke I... says, then Hypnodisc wouldn't have won less than bloody uh, radio DJs, so... <laughs> Yeah, I, I I do I do want to note um the 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 what goes on with the pinball though because Razor wasn't meant to be in the pinball it was it was meant to be taking part in another in a, another football competition where it would have been matched against of all things Miss Struts but <laughs> the state then, of that then then, then the match was cancelled because of the the behind the scenes safety concerns and accidents and all that. So they shoved Razor into the pinball tournament. Now, imagine you're imagine you are Dominator. Okay, you've been on top of this fucking competition since the first bloody heat. You've <laughs> sixty points, and the next best uh, machine is six pack with one hundred and thirty five. Then fucking Razor comes in right at the end. And gets 210. Well, we should also know that Vaser was meant to partake in a tag team Teva, and legitimately, they were going to pair Vaser up with Panic Attack. Like, <laughs> the state of it. Come, come on, on, lads. Come like, on. Series 3 <laughs> is a little bit limited in amazing bots anyway. You can't just say, oh, here you go, lads, here's Tombstone and Bike Force. Your opponents <laughs> are... I don't know, who Who would be the opponents in Series 3's tag team? Well, that's team? the thing, it's you ridiculous. know it's gonna, you know it's going to be like, I don't know, like, Blade and all Oh, or God. <laughs> Just getting absolutely mullered. Yeah. So, so, yeah, after the main competition, technically they have the World Championship and then International League was filmed last. 
But I'm not. I'd ra- I'm not finishing on Razor versus Diator, so we'll get that yeah. out of the way now. And this this was a this is again something that Razor wasn't supposed to be in. Uh, it was it was meant to be Cassius too. Uh, this was the very transparent. Let's give Cassius a trophy episode, uh, <laughs> which is is what it was. And then Cassius two dropped out probably because of the whole uh, in. Someone got stabbed in the leg. And um, because of that, uh, they subbed Razor in. So it became the tra- transparent, let's give Razor a trophy episode. <laughs> Again, well, imagine if like, they could... all of the really good bots pulled out until it became the, like, <laughs> let's give uh, Pandemonium a Trident. trophy award. Yeah, Trident, there you go. Let's yeah. give Trident a trophy <laughs> award. How bad yeah, would that be? This, it would have been awful. And yeah, though, this, this, this probably... Uh, I, I'm. I part of me is surprised they didn't give it to Hypnodisc. Presumably, uh, Hypnodisc probably wouldn't have been in great condition after yeah. the of Series Three. But well, it, it, yeah, it wouldn't look good if you ha- if your big bad bot was getting like was failing to knock out Techno. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, speaking of Techno, I love this fight because, as we said, this fight was filmed after the international after the World Championship, and so is looking to have a bit of fun with it and. Oh man, they show off everywhere. They completely warp Technolis. Like, the entire box section is just, like, crushed. It's like you stamped on a wet cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> they get shunned to flip them over just so they can show off the stream mech. You suspend the ram, to suspend the wedge just so they can ram into it, and then lift them up with the tail. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are just showing off. They are it? taking the piss of it, aren't they? Yeah, this, great. this is actually this is the first fight I ever saw. Oh, that's a great first. That's a good fight. intro. That is a good yeah. intro. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the p- pity about the rest of the episode, but th- this this was was a pretty good place to start. Oh yeah, this was also the first razor fight that I ever saw. Oh, beautiful! I remember oh, yeah. my first ever Robot Wars content probably being something from the Gauntlet. So yay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it made me really confused because I had seen the um, semifinals and, like, in the recaps, it never mentioned um, any robot there fighting Razor. And so I was sure there must be some explanation other than that Razor lost to a robot that didn't even make the semifinal. That could not have been it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well... Irony and all that. <laughs> Vazor only has one more fight in the International League here against Diator. And it goes exactly as you'd expect. Razor crushes him, pits him, wins a <laughs> crap, pointless trophy. Yeah. More, probably the most meaningless trophy Razor ever, I mean, Robot Wars ever gave, apart from every single one in Extreme 2. <laughs> uh, Jesus Prometheus Christ. would have dominated them if they hadn't dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so now we can talk about the World Championship, Hooray! where Razor becomes a star. Aww. And it has another really good fight to start off with. I love the fight against oh, Talk yeah. so much. First World Championship yeah. is an amazing episode. It is. Yeah, poor, poor all Talk. Man. Yeah. They're, they're so perfect to bot for Razor to kill. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but Razor does another one of its like really awkwardly, aesthetically pleasing attacks. That, that crumpling attack which puts both machines up in the air at an angle. Oh, yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, they were rather fond of the, like, nails on the chalkboard sound effect for oh, that fight. Oh, not that sound effect. God. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh. Is that the worst sound effect Robot Wars ever had? Yeah. yeah. For, like, for, like, damaging sound effects, yeah, but the actual worst would just be the crowd chanting Razor, Razor in every single fight <laughs> ever. No, I think, I think the worst one is, is, is still that one wailing cheer. Yes, that. The loud <laughs> banshee woman screaming for any attack ever. Like, there's yeah. one fight where I think Red Nought literally pokes somebody and you hear the banshee. And it's like, mate, yeah. I know Dreadnought moving <laughs> is uncommon, but calm down. <laughs> that played like every, every like, it really did. seconds in Arena's of Destruction. Oh, <laughs> Like, nothing was happening. It just, like... Amazing stuff. Yeah. Apparently, though, this this fight was... Razor almost suffered a fatal, like, injury in this fight. According to the website, during the battle, the claw shorted out and 
got stuck in all talk and was just burning out the claw motor. Oh, no. And they had to get Rob Knight to rig some LEDs so they know when it was happening so they could just hit the fail oh. or else. Yeah, Razor could have just broken down again the World Championship and just their entire career could have just swerved off. Yeah. But instead, they go on to... Instead, they uh, survive and beat the World Champion in a completely dominant fashion. Yeah, they... they... Curb stomp chaos too, and that's not a thing you'd ever expect to happen. <laughs> the moment, the moment when George Francis realizes that you know he's missed the first flip, he just absolutely shits himself. It's it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a, this, yeah this, is, this is a good example of how good Razor's control is because I mean Ian Lewis and George Francis, both great drivers. Chaos two, like you say, George just shits it, <laughs> goes into this mad mad swerve into the wall. And then Razor just calm as anything, drives over and kills the flippers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a really short fight, but it's amazing for how short it is. We should have had a flashback to Chaos 2 losing its CO2 against Kilohertz in that fight, shouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's, it's like that. That was that was perpetually Chaos 2's weakness, and and for the life of me, I don't know why they never decided to just paint the fucking backplate. <laughs> paint it. <laughs> paint it. What would that do? Put the crustacean. <laughs> just, 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 just. No, no. Just, just paint the whole thing so you can't see the bloody bottle in it. I suppose. I mean, <laughs> I'd be more than glad off. to go in blindly. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, at least you got half a chance of not hitting the most vital area of the robot that way. <laughs> so yeah, the bears are just kill murders. The champion. Yeah. And then, then goes into one on one. And this fight is very important, right? Because this marks the first recorded use of the part bird, part reptile by JP. Oh. Ah, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That That yeah, is vital, Jonathan Pierce trivia. You need to know that. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> it, 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 is, it, it is important. It is one of his favourite phrases. <laughs> alongside many other things that, that we won't go into depth about. Sorry. Yeah. The yeah the the, the thing I, I one of the things I like about this fight is that like the one hundred and one team know they're gonna lose. <laughs> like yeah. no hope in this fight. So they go around and specifically draw on the bits of their robot, saying, "Okay, these are the least expensive bits to replace. So can you <laughs> target these ones, please." And Razor does. Um, well, you know, none of it's expensive. It all costs one pound and a penny. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That is yeah, definitely. That true. was definitely true. <laughs> Just like 259 <laughs> costs two pound fifty nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you should just tap out if you're going to be playing that game of, like, here's where the expensive stuff is at. Please don't hit it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Razor actually did have a habit of... of the, the team would go and scout out in the pit and, and have a look at everyone's robots and figure out what are the bits we can we can mangle that will be the least problematic to replace so that they can put on a good show and cripple their opponent without actually, you know, putting them hundreds of pounds out of pocket. Oh, well, isn't that upstanding of them? Yeah, uh, but it does mean you get things like them ripping all of Millie Ambuck's wheels off. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, then they're just wheels, so fair's fair. Yeah, yeah. Their next fight, the finale of the World Championship against Beardmoth, I think you could pretty reasonably call this the first Grey Robot Wars fight. Uh, pretty much. Great meaning what? Maybe, yeah. yeah. As in the first, like, truly, like, really good, because you, you, you had good ones before. You had, like, Panic Attack versus Exterminator on Chaos 2 versus the Big Cheese, but I feel like this is the first truly, like, iconic one, for lack of a better word. It, it's, it's definitely up there. Um, if you're talking about two machines going all the way, both having big dominant periods, then yeah, it's it's definitely and, and one both, of those in there, yeah. Both machines that are like like big names, like Exterminator's not a big name mm -hmm. yet. Yeah, not yet. These are two big machines, both going the distance, because Chaos 2, the Big Cheese is great, but obviously the Big Cheese gets KO'd still kind of early, comparatively. Yeah. And it's, and it's high stakes. Yeah. It's the world championship. On, I mean... Granted, the World Championship, it's a, it's a bit, it's a bit bunk because all your, all the best robots <laughs> in the world are across the ocean and refusing to take part. Oh so, yeah, yeah, the first uh, version of Maximil wasn't quite finished yet. What a shame. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, I mean, the the other thing that's great about this fight is that it, it's two 
amazing robots that haven't seen a whole lot of success in the actual main competition yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, Beamoth's a semi final. Yeah, but it, it oh. wasn't a it was a, it wasn't a great semi finalist, and it was in series two. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, I remember mean, series two Beamoth. And the series two design was crap, so you have to take points yeah. off of that. Does it? Like that's just. But not, I mean, there's few. You can't make there's... The exceptions for. <laughs> there's few bots in robot worlds that can effectively count the rails, but of them, Beamoth is one of the better ones because it's got this big scoop up front which can kind of slot under them and overturn them. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, you could reasonably argue they should have won this fight from the off when they got them on the flame grill. Mm, yeah. That's a totally legitimate KO. Yeah, it, it is. And it, it, it's part of the ongoing thing with Robot Wars where it's just like, what counts as being immobilized and what counts as being pinned and requiring you to be freed yeah they are incredibly inconsistent about this to the point that it's just like i i still don't fucking know to be honest yeah. like <laughs> i mean it is a problem but i am very very happy that it went the way it did in this particular fight because mate a ko like that in the world champ final would have been a bit awkward yeah and then gradually the the the, the course of the fight turns steadily more against Behemoth and uh Yeah, Vez has got some pretty pretty gnarly damage points. Yeah. Uh just just the pictures of it you can see just how it how it it just fucking mangles anything it gets the core into. And that super, <laughs> super close up camera angle where Razor's digging in and both machines start shaking because it's doing that much damage and going so deep, mate. Yeah. Some beautiful yeah. razor shots in the first world championship. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and Ve so Vesa wins the World Championship and finally arrives really on the scene and they they get given the prize by Mark Thorpe and I mean, as Mark Thorpe says, like, Vesa is really the fulfilment of what he was looking to do. Something powerful, something damaging, but also beautiful. Yeah. It, it's it's not some it's not somebody gray, it's not somebody grey box of a lifter on. It's it's Razor. Yeah, it's Razor. Uh, that, 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 oh, that, wow, that, it was a grey triangle thingy with a lifter against Techno Lees, mate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was also, it also had, had, a, had a crusher and uh, a high speed ram and <laughs> self rocket wings. Yeah, that's fair. It, it was, it was the full package and, and, it, it, and that, that, that's, that's exactly the kind of mentality that's going to, uh, shall we say, have interesting effects on the show later in its run. <laughs> Yeah. I think they used that Mark Thorpe footage for the International League trophy as well. Yeah, they did repeat. <laughs> yeah, they did. So another there plus side to Razor winning. <laughs> there, there probably wasn't an actual International League trophy. They just <laughs> tacked on the, uh, the, the World Championship foot and just like, fuck it, and pretend this is the one. So yeah, Razor returns in Series 4, the number 3 seed, and I think that's fully justified. Yeah. I mean, they, they beat, like, two, they beat the champion, a semi-finalist, and the former semi-finalist on the route, and um, they started in, like, the best episode of Robot Wars to that point. Uh, so yeah, I think the number 3 seed was totally justified. Uh, that I don't think they made many changes to the Robot other than fixing it so that the claw doesn't get stuck anymore. Yeah, it's uh it's a little more refined and this this is this is the the razor that probably people are most familiar with, I think, uh just because it's the one that the toy looked like. Like the, 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 if if you had a had a, a a razor toy, this is the razor toy that you had. Unless you're one of those people that went and, and, and modified it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I have um, the page open. Apparently they made a couple of other improvements. Um, series 4 was when they introduced the wheel rollers and also oh, yeah. and also they got um, those, f those the wheel frames, those uh, horizontal things that cover the wheels were um, changed to titanium. They, this time they tried to give it a heat that was, was fitting for the sort of things they expected of Razor. But then uh, Blade and Trident dropped out, and fucking Pussycat got moved. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Originally, if Blade and Trident had been, then logically Vaser's opponent in this would have been King B, which would have been <laughs> yeah. beyond the cakewalk. 
It, yeah, that would that would have been exactly. Razor didn't wouldn't have to actually do anything to win that fight. Because... No, King B would legitimately have died against Robo Chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Robo Chicken, the melee is one of the most lopsided melees ever. I mean, <laughs> it can attack Robo Chicken and Velocity but at will. Yeah, um, it, 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 it's quite literally a, a, a none of you seem to understand. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. <laughs> yeah, I think that goes for both melees in this heat, to be fair, because Pussycat straight up murdered yeah. Millie Armbug as well, so... <laughs> yeah. I mean... They kill, they kill Velociraptor with a single crush, which is something we will become used to seeing yeah. in Velociraptor's career. Yeah, I don't think they even expected to kill Velociraptor there. Yeah, <laughs> Another flashback to a Velociraptor breakdown incoming. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Look, this, this, is, this, is a, this is a robot that the, its most famous victory was caused entirely by it running away until the other robot stopped working. So, yeah... So yeah, after defeating uh, Velociraptor, Viz moves on to Millianburg and one of the best driving displays we ever saw in Robot Wars. Like, the precision needed to just peel off the wheels like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just like, like it, it's just, just slowly dismantling a robot over the course of the entire fight. Yeah, and this seemed to be one where they were visibly trying to avoid the sensitive bits. Yeah, well, they were. Well, they... Uh, as we'll hear in as we'll hear in his uh, in in his address to the nation, that is exactly <laughs> what he was trying to do. Yeah, because that... I mean, he could have ended that so quickly. If he just gone up to the central pod and just crushed through, yeah, he would have all but, he would have absolutely killed them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Billy Amberg is a a memorable robot, and as as we've seen from the uh the, the countdown, an iconic robot. But it's not a good robot. <laughs> yeah, no. like, part of this Razor's showboating was enabled by Millie, like, really having no chance of doing anything to them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, again, this was another situation where Razor was indeed asked to, like, not damage the expensive bits. And so their, their first plan was to, to try and, and cut the uh, the joint between the two halves of the robot. Which and turn them into a cluster bot. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> that that proved a little too awkward to manage, so they just set off and pulling all the wheels off instead. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Razor's crush is quite enough to crush the like steel tubing or whatever that's connecting Millie Ambug. I think it, I think that's its limit. But yeah, they they do kill off Millie Ambug, and then we get an infamous their second most infamous fight, I'll say, um, against Pussycat. Uh, we've we've covered this in the previous podcast. Um, basically, Pussy, Pussycat's the first impact from their disc. This is this is a razor explanation. It baffles me. It travelled through the chassis and caused a failure in a new car switch installed, which kind of leaves me thinking that any robot which was going to give them like a significant impact would have caused the same. Yeah, so maybe. I don't think I don't think I don't think Razor was going to be championship material because i think stinger dominated certainly hypnotis they would have all probably done this there yeah most likely um but it was it was still certainly very high tier um and the thing the thing to remember with this one is this fight because of, of how it goes down is often grouped in with the oh yeah raises a bit shit in the early years but this in, in this case honestly it reaches the heat final and just gets outclassed by a better machine well, yeah, pus yeah. Like, Pussycat is the hard counter to Razor. Yeah, and like to, to say that this is this is a fight where Razor gets done in by its, its reliability is kind of underrating Pussycat a bit too much, to my liking. Um, I because I, as as I've made it clear before, I'm a massive fanboy of Razor, but Pussycat is my second favourite. So, <laughs> I think it's just... so. There ain't no losing for you here. No, no, li literally not. Because like, with this, this is this is, this. Fight is ironically kind of why Pussycat became a big favorite of mine because I was like, well, my favorite got knocked out, so my only recourse here is to decide that the robot that knocked it out must be the best. So. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and after this we get the infamous credit sequence. The, <laughs> some people are gentlemen. I've seen some people say, oh, they shouldn't have put that on TV. Are you kidding me? That is fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Television. Yeah, is it? That's really? great entertainment. It's not. It's not. It's not like in. It's not like in the reboot where it's like, 
It's bloody Ant Pritchard and, getting my <laughs> And Pritchard. <laughs> and Pr- it's not it's we're, not we're a reboot, sh- it's Ant Pritchard like storming off or Jarvis being awkward. J- J- Jarvis having a mental breakdown and the cameraman shoving shoving his, uh, uh, recorder in his face, you know. <laughs> no, it's 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 a hilarious rant. It's classic TV yeah. and the yeah, only you gotta have that. The on. only thing I'm Even disappointed J- about is that uh in Extreme 2, when Ian Lewis throws the fight against Tornado, we don't have a flashback to this. <laughs> Some people are gentle. Exactly. Some people do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think he wanted... I think it was him specifically who wanted to throw that fight. Yeah. And, um... Then, yeah, out, outside of the main competition, Razor... Uh, it, Razor's performance is outside of the main competition and nowhere near as spectacular as they were in Series 3. Um, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say well, that. Well, the, the Southern Annihilator is one thing, but we also have to consider that they got completely bodied in the sumo and uh, spent all of their pinball run picking a fight with Killer Lot. That is true, but I think <laughs> in the sumo, most of the rules were if you're a good robot, you're going to do really crap. Because <laughs> most of them did really bad. Firestorm, Pussycat, Razor. Bearmoth was just a bit of a shit house. Panic Attack, you know. <laughs> I mean, Behemoth attack. came in second, didn't they? Yeah, but that would be like, I don't know, you just going in the sumo ring and putting the tornado frame around <laughs> the whole ring so you don't fall off. Behemoth <laughs> cheated. That's what I'm saying, lad. Don't know <laughs> yeah. about you. So Exterminator <laughs> cheated too? Yeah, I love Exterminator too, but it did cheat as well. Gotta be consistent. Yeah. You I know, mean, I suppose know. in Razor's shoes, if you see that happening and you realize, okay, my bot is just not the right designed to win this then you just go in there well, and know, screw around at the end of the day the, the 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 whole point of this competition is is to shove shunt backwards and razor made his entrance into the series by doing a very good job of shoving shunt backwards that is true i know that, I know that the series 4 version of shunt is significantly better than the series 2 version but you know but um yeah the, the point where razor's uh score is equal to that of invertebrate uh, it was in the pinball. Something's gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, they were clearly just screwing around in the pinball. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just like, yeah, we could get some good points, or we could just have a fight with Killer Lot, and you know, fair. The thing is, a Look. lot obviously gets made about Razor being like completely full on competitive and never having fun in the later series, but. It never gets enough credit for how much it played around with its opponents and the house robots from series two to four, especially. Like it had some really fun fights and moments. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it really isn't until late that we start to see like the, the Razor that people yeah. who hate Razor think Razor. And that's more down to other really good robots not being good enough to beat it. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like, yeah, and the heat's being. I don't know. Would you say that? Um, he, that their heat in five six was uh, more difficult, or it was less difficult than two three four. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's less difficult than four certainly. <laughs> yeah, but I yeah. think once you once no the series that. expanded, every good seed had easy heats. So that's kind of like the whole idea for most part of it. Yeah, the the entire point of seeding was to create a situation in which the good robots wouldn't be paired up against each other in round one and Yeah. And unless you're Kim lose. Davis and you just decide fuck it and bring Panic Attack Gold along, so <laughs> <laughs> Well Yeah. And I love Panic Attack Gold, but <laughs> Yeah, that's because we as we established when we did shitbots, you've got terrible taste. I know, Dan, I know. <laughs> So, Vaza does return for the Southern Annihilator, and I mean... And here's another fantastic uh, uh, outside of series Razor episode. I wouldn't I wouldn't say fantastic. There's a bit too many slow lifters here for me. Mate, mind. the uh, Southern see, Annihilator is fantastic. The su- oh, it's a good... The Southern Annihilator... It's a good episode, but I mean... The Southern Annihilator is really good. It just gets... It just, gets dragged down in comparison to how bloody brilliant the northern and that is true yeah but in here i get to push forward my attila the drum propaganda so hey if if we yeah i know you do but (laughs) if if we didn't have the northern annihilator this would be regarded as much better i think oh these two annihilators in general they're just fantastic like if you had to open an entire 
bases of a competition with two episodes. These are basically the perfect two to go with. So, like, yeah, probably. Yeah, imagine a, if you opened no the whole Annihilator concept with like the bunny attack one from Extreme Warriors. <laughs> that would be pretty damn boring. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it. Yeah, it's weird. They kind of in these two annihilators, they've got no qualms whatsoever about shoving all the best robots in. And then when they try that again in a uh, extreme, it's just the complete. It just it just completely falls apart because all the better robots aren't working. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're already. And that's more to already... do with the stress of them all being in loads of other competitions scattered across film yeah. as well. So probably yeah. not the best idea so, overall there. Yeah. The... Round one. Yeah. In the first round, they just completely focus on Verse and Gerrix, which I think is the singly <laughs> least threatening or <laughs> problematic robot for Razor. Yeah. It's Yeah, I think I think so this easy particular target. targeting is why I kind of sometimes feel it's a bit silly when people say in uh, fantasy tournaments that a certain bot is gonna ta- at- attack a certain bot, because you know, why would Razor focus on Verse and Gerrix? And then you're trying the... to you're trying to suggest in like fantasy tournaments that Razor's gonna deliberately take out this or that. It's like whoever Ian Lewis has the feeling he wants to take out, he'll just take out, lads. Just that's yeah, whoever, whoever's closest when the bell starts. <laughs> yeah. It, it, in this case, there may have been a bit of a like this is this is one of the easier machines here to crush. Um, I... I mean, they were all pretty easy apart from onslaught. Mate, and killer. Onslaught, and, what a unit! Playing it again. Though, like... I, I think it also isn't helped by Verse and Gerrix being a bit of a cheeky bastard with an axe attack, so... Yeah. <laughs> Ver- and Ver- Verse and Gerrix is a bit shit as well. So it, honestly, <laughs> it's, it, it's easy to get a hold of and it's easy to kill. And... Plastic Martins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but you you got you to gotta think about this one, is that Razor goes into this, they are the robot to kill. Like, yeah. this is the one that everybody is going to want to take down. The obvious target for being ganged up on. And we saw what, what can happen with that with Chaos 2. Well, I mean, that's Go that's that's pretty much what happens in round two. Like, at some point, they, there's like a two, there's like a minute long stretch where Beamoff on Salt and Spawn are all just turning over Razor as it keeps turning itself out. Yeah. But in the Northern Annihilator, Domin- I mean, Chaos 2 was just getting smashed by, like, three axes at once. <laughs> yeah. Here, Viz is just kind of getting rolled around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, they're keeping the pressure on well, but at the same time, you feel like it would be down to a Razor breakdown more than an opponent attack that would cause yeah, it to but... drop out here. That that That's the way it goes in most Annihil- Annihilators, though, because they are very different to the to the rest of the competition in that they're, they're all about endurance. Um gradually robots just sort of fall off with the limited repair time and the amount of shit going on. Yeah. I mean, after after, after they finish doing the roly-poly, this is just straight up KOs the two, the two <laughs> like, most accomplished opponents. Like, it gets this, the smallest squeeze on spawner scooter, kills them. It just takes out a gear on beam off that they can't replace. So it literally, in just one fight, just murdered a semi-finalist and the number six that is team. pretty great isn't it razor's yeah. like being pinned down for two minutes and then in two attacks it kills both of them yeah it is like okay you want to play that way let's get serious <laughs> <laughs> it is literally just that that moment in in a in like a, a movie or something where, where the character that's just been getting beat on for like half <laughs> like exact like an inch more of their power and just swats everyone aside <laughs> Viz is just like I've only been using two percent of my power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god. And then they nearly lose Razor. the bloody Attila the drum and onslaught. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Uh, after after effort, effortlessly dispatching uh, Behemoth and and Spawn of Scutter, it gets into a very difficult fight with Attila the drum. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. lad. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow found itself with the two hardest to crush. Yeah, Attila is Attila is the robot equivalent of a jawbreaker. <laughs> what are they? What is Razor going to do to that thing? Yeah, it it it's it's not good. It's just shit in a way Oi. that makes like, difficult for Razor. To... <laughs> it's unconventional. That's yes, it's Luke, shit. Thank you. No. It's yes, I mean, I mean, it is like the two worst things for Razor. It's number one, tall, and number two, um, just one thing like 
like how it's, one yeah, it's round a... thing, like Killy Cranky, is just not pieces put together, but just a drain pipe, and that Did... that stands up well to crushing. The Dan scale of quality in Robot Wars is like number one Razor, number two Pussycat, and then it's just number three to like 855 shit. No, I, I, <laughs> fuck off, mate. I fucking love Bigger Brother. And... <laughs> Bigger Brother in Series 4, you said? Not Series 4, no. Series 3? Yes. Yes, yes. mate. Exactly. And the Morning yeah. Star, you got to love it. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're honestly saved by Onslaught here, because Onslaught yes, pushes the Tillman to kill a lot, and kill a lot just... Kills them. <laughs> Onslaught yeah. wanted that one on one with Razor to prove it's the best. Fair play to it. Yeah. Yeah, see, what they should have done is uh, my tactic that I sometimes employ, because I have a fast ish robot, and you demonstrate aggression with, with little risk by just charging at them, but sort of missing. Yeah. The you judge is like that. Sparring with them, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, here, see, I'm trying to hit you. Oh, I, I was just off by a little. That doesn't yeah. deduct points for me, because I was trying, and he was just sitting there. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit... <laughs> you gotta so do we, what you gotta do. We do, we do get that legend... We do get that legendary one on one, and uh, Onslaught puts in the only tactic it has, which is just run around, because it's qu too quick and too small for it. Yeah, really and it's... And that's... it can't turn that well. It, it's also that got twenty that thirty year old motor putting in more. Yeah, it's it's also got incredibly thick top armor. Um, yeah, yeah, Riz can't do anything. Riz so is clearly yeah. flagging a bit by this point, so it, it's uh, unable to 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 bite through. Um, oh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's even flagging. It's just onslaught is just made up of thick metal. Razor can pierce through body panels for days, but it's not going to crush into a dense piece of like whatever. Titanium, whatever onslaught's made out of. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the final is is a a very famous fight, albeit not for anything that onslaught really does. Yeah, literally onslaught. Like the second it's flipped by Matilda, onslaught is it may as well have gone out of the ring. It doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, because they what what had happened was that the this this the series four incarnation of Matilda they realised that chainsaws fucking suck. Had decided they were going to retire that particular version of her, and so they they said oh, to the Razor team, "Okay, if you win this, we'll let you tear apart Matilda for the for the finale of the episode." And uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, so they're like, "If you win this, we'll let you tear up Matilda." Or sorry, the, uh, this is sort of a joke. I'm thinking they're saying, "When you win, we'll let you tear up Matilda," and the and Razor's like, "You mean if we win?" And the producers are like, right. Imagine like, imagine like if Ian Lewis had to go through several rounds of like grueling <laughs> negotiations to make sure that it was Matilda he got to kill. It's like, right, at first you get like one of the awkward bits of body panels in the pits that you can claw through that we'll just chuck in the arena. Okay, no, you want more? We'll give you like, I don't know, the arena angle grinder. Oh no, you want more? All right. Well, you can attack the flame pit a little bit, you know, put a robot over there, drive your wedge into there so it pulls up the paint a bit. I was like, okay, we'll give you fucking Matilda then, sure. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we've got the sentinel. <laughs> yeah, I think we, I think yeah, we've got the old the man. Somewhere. He's asleep in the back room. You can go and get him while he's down. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So the this is is one of the most widely uh, circulated clips from Robot Wars. I think is just yeah. Where he's a, uh, dismembering the back end of Matilda. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun, and it's a, it's a nice end to allow Razor to save some face after failing once again to win a tournament. Yeah, and well, to win the championship, and yeah, the the final flourish at the end where they're kind of perched up, one of the nicest oh, shots we ever saw of Razor. Great. Oh yeah, this it emphasizes everything about it. it's beautiful. <laughs> Razor lends itself very well to very nice camera shots. It does, it does. Yes. Like, I, I, I might... I, I'm not sure if I could write an essay about it, but I could certainly write a, a few good few paragraphs of, about it lifting up Firestorm 3 in Extreme 1. Oh, yes. Beautiful stuff. Mm. I expect to see that now, Dan. You've got... Yeah, that's it. that's your first that's your first uh, wiki blog. I would say yeah, I would won. say you've got like a couple of weeks to do it, but this episode will probably come out in like I don't know midway through twenty twenty one. So you've got about a year to get that out. Yeah, a couple yeah. of sentences, mate. <laughs> mm, yeah, 
But it, 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 it it's a as, as we said at the start of the episode, it is a an aesthetically perfect machine. Yeah. And it's just it's so fucking good. Yeah, and the, and like the fi- the things you're saying are obvious, but yeah, but you have to point them out nevertheless. Yeah, like look, I, I know a lot of people are are quite negative on Razor, and just like oh no, it just hugs things for five minutes and 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 then gets a win, and uh, they 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 broke the crusher rules all the time. But yeah, were just really badly defined. I think it's one of those things where Razor obviously had fights where it had to be hyper competitive and push rules to the limit but at the same time you can't have a full out agenda against it because it did provide a lot of good fights a lot of fun fights and a lot of really notable moments on the show overall so yeah. you, you can't just act like it was a virus on the entire of robot wars the second it was in the arena no it might break the rules but i mean it looks so good. Dude. <laughs> I, can't hold, I can't hold anything. I mean, my I defense was going to be that it. maybe it got favorable matchups, but at the same yeah. time, that still meant it could beat like well over fifty percent of the field without. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sweat. being funny. I don't think Trident would have exactly have uh, ever been a worry to Chaos Two Series Three Championship win, would it? So no. <laughs> um, but. You know, you know that 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 that's the uh, the th- the thing here is that like rules in Robot Wars were incredibly badly explained, like badly explained, badly enforced. <laughs> yeah, it's just like n- nobody knew what the that half the time when when there was like some argument over the rules, it was because like nobody had ever actually done that before, and they had to make a decision <laughs> on the spot as whether yeah. it was legal or not, like. And our arms up was just like, well, it doesn't say you can do that. Yeah. But... <laughs> and I'm not being funny. Even in the modern day, even in BattleBots, where they have, like, uh, arena-side referees and officials, you still have moments where there's, like, really, really long pinnings from someone like Sawblaze. But because they're bringing the sword down, then up, but still keeping a machine against the arena wall and wiggling a little bit, it's, you know, you have that bit of leeway there. But it's always going to be something that's under the spotlight but doesn't fully get punished because it's hard to judge when it should be punished. So that brings an end to uh, the first part of Razor. Uh, next episode we shall cover the remainder of Razor's career from... Somehow. Extreme... <laughs> <laughs> yes, all 32 fights. And we'll uh, nevertheless from... get sidetracked about Maverick or something like that. Don't worry. Inevitably. Uh... Yeah, we'll cover from Extreme 1 to uh, Series 8. Beautiful. It um, does. It does fight Rick in series five. Oh no! I forgot <laughs> about that for a second. Look, it'll be. It'll be until it'll be five until as long we as we reach... don't bring Theo. Oh no! <laughs> right, that's okay, the only person that's in the entire world we, that fights Rick. <laughs> we shall be joined again by Mister Vizetto Replicas. Thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah, thanks. glad to be here. Not Theo. <laughs> and until then, uh, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Take care.